At the start of the 13th century, a new dominating force came out of the steppes of East Central Asia. They were the Mongols, and out of their homelands, they began invading and conquering territory in every direction. Their ruthless leader, Genghis Khan, united many of the nomadic tribes in the region to form the Mongol Empire. In a few short decades, it became the largest continuous land empire in history, stretching from Hungary to the Sea of Japan at its peak. By 1239, one of the areas the Mongols had conquered in its vast empire was the Crimean Peninsula. In 1266, the Mongols on the Black Sea allowed the Republic of Genoa to establish the city of Kaffa on the southern coast of the peninsula. The Republic of Genoa was one of the great trading powers in Europe during the time period. The city of Kaffa allowed the Genoese to dominate trading in the region and it became an important commercial hub between Europe and the Far East. By the end of the 13th century, the Mongol Empire had been split into four separate khanates that pursued their own interests after wars over succession. The Northwestern Khanate would be known as the Golden Horde, and it would survive in some fashion until the beginning of the 16th century. By 1291, Kaffa fell under the authority of the Khan of the Golden Horde named Takta. The Genoese and the Khan had a tense relationship, and by 1307, the city was besieged by the Mongols. The Khan had disapproved of the Genoese trading of Turkic slaves to the Mameluk Sultanate in Egypt because it deprived him of foot soldiers for his own army. The Genoese resisted the siege for a year, but eventually set fire to the city and deserted it. However, Takda died in 1312, and the new ruler of the Golden Horde, Uzbeg, invited the Genoese back to establish their trading colony. He even allowed them to expand their trading enterprise by ceding them land at the city of Tana. Tana was connected by trade to central Russia, which had overland caravan routes linking it to East Asia. Kaffa became a thriving and heavily fortified city in the coming decades, with people of all ethnicities and religions living there. In 1343, relations again took a turn for the worse. A brawl between Italians and Muslims left one Muslim dead in the city of Tana, which provoked the ire of the new Khan, Janabeg. By that period, the Golden Horde Khanate had embraced Islam as their major religion. Soon afterwards, Janabeg besieged both cities of Kaffa and Tana. The Italian merchants in Tana were able to flee to the safer Kaffa due to its maritime access along the coast, despite the siege. The siege lasted until February 1344, when Italian relief forces arrived and killed 15,000 Mongol troops and destroyed their siege machines. Janabeg tried again the next year to besiege the city, but failed because Kaffa still retained access to the sea and was easily supplied by merchant ships. However, the Mongol army still kept up the siege. By 1346, Janabeg's besieging army was devastated by an outbreak of the bubonic plague brought with them from their travels across Asia. Many thousands of his soldiers were infected and dying rapidly from the extremely deadly disease. Desperate and losing hope in the siege, the Mongols next committed one of the first recorded acts of biological warfare in history. Their leaders ordered infected corpses to be placed in catapults and lobbed into the city in the hope that the bodies would kill everyone inside. It was believed at the time that the infection spread because of putrid or poisonous air emanating from those infected with the plague. Although the Mongols soon abandoned the siege and the Genoese still controlled Kaffa, the biological attack was devastating to the inhabitants of the city. The infected cadavers easily spread the disease when in close contact with the city dwellers, especially when they were disposing of the Mongol bodies. It wasn't known at the time, but fleas of infected rodents transmitted the disease to humans. In Kaffa, it most likely spread through direct contact with infectious body fluid of the Mongol corpses that were often in wet, sticky, and mangled condition when flung over the city walls. Bubonic plague can also pass from rodents to humans via the bite of the flea carrying the disease. The flea acquires the bacterium that causes the plague as it lives on the skin of the rodent. From the infection site, the plague drained to a lymph node that swelled to form a painful bubo, most often in the groin, on the thigh, in an armpit, or on the neck. The presence of so much bacteria in the bloodstream caused the immune system to freak out, triggering a condition called septic shock. The body's blood vessels began leaking, decreasing blood volume, 
This led to abnormal clotting and multiple organ failure. It took three to five days for the infected person to display symptoms and for 80% of the people, another three to five days before they were dead. In Kaffa, residents were dying by the thousands and some of those that survived fled the city on infected ships to ports in Europe. Many of these ships carried infected rats that accompanied the refugees leaving the city. They were a common presence in cargo during sea voyages even before the spread of the plague. It is believed that these ships, that eventually docked in ports in Sicily and southern Italy, may have been the first source of the Black Death to reach Western Europe in 1347. In October of that year, 12 Genoese ships from the Black Sea docked at the Sicilian port of Messina. The people gathered at the docks were met with a horrifying surprise. Most of the sailors were dead, and those that were still alive were covered in black boils that oozed blood and pus. The authorities quickly ordered the ships of death out of the harbor, but it was already too late. The Black Death had landed in Europe. Having originated in China and Inner Asia, the plague spread with Mongol armies and traders as they moved further and further west. The important trading routes along the Silk Road played a significant role in spreading the disease. It entered the Mediterranean Sea from the Crimean Peninsula, mostly on infected Genoese merchant ships that were following established maritime trade routes. However, historians are divided on how big a role the infected ships from Kaffa played in causing the Black Death in Europe. Many scholars said it could have been the trigger for spreading the entire pandemic that devastated much of the continent. Others believe it was just one of several streams of infected ships and caravans leaving the region that reached European ports. The plague ended up spreading from Europe to North Africa and the Middle East. From 1347 to 1351, the Black Death killed an estimated 25 million people in Europe, or at least one-third of the entire population. Up to 100 million people could have been killed worldwide, and it took 200 years for the world population to recover to its previous level.